Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation to the conference and for making me reading this uh, very good paper. I think it has many, many, many possibilities. Uh, I am not going to, to repeat the results of the paper. Celine did a magnificent job doing the results, the, presenting the results. Let me just say that this is a paper about a topic with a long tradition in economics, which is what technology does for employment. Uh, it has so long tradition that we are still discussing this every day. Okay? Uh, and as I said, the paper is very good. It has a, an excellent data set. Uh, I have been a member of the European System of Central Banks Research Network for the last 20 years. And one thing that I learned is that the data set at the National Bank of Belgium are always above the average, are always <laughs> excellent. And they are always to the point that you want to, to, to research, okay? As a summary of the paper, let me just say that the main message that you get from reading the paper is that digitalization is a skill bias technological progress, which uh, this is basically the main message of the paper. Okay, so I have three comments. Uh, one is about what is in the paper, and my main concern is the definition and the measurement of digitalization that they do. And then I have two comments about things that are not in the paper, but maybe they should be, which are what Celine mentioned at the end of the presentation, that maybe you need to look at other things rather than employment, like wages and productivity, and then I will have something to say about causal effects. Okay, so the, the method uh, and the definition of digitalization, the definition comes from purchases and the sectoral classification of providers of goods and services to the firms. Uh, in the appendix, you have a table with the list of those goods and services. There are 10 sectors at the four-digit NASA classification characterized as provided of digital services. To my taste, this is too wide. There are many things there considered as digital goods and services. Uh, but if you don't have a finer disaggregation, maybe that's what you should do. What I am most concerned is about the discretization of, of the of the expenditures on, on digitalization. This is a point that uh, Dolores also made on the previous paper. Why do you want to discretize this and classify firms in digitalized and non-digitalized instead of using a continuous measure? Let me, let me give you an example. Suppose a firm that buys a license for a software product covering a period of five years. And now consider another firm buying the same license every year for a period of five years. Those two firms are spending the same, are using the same technology, but still in your classification, one will be probably in one group and the other one will not be in the other group because the, the firm who buys products once every five years won't be above the median every year. Okay? So, you know, I am an old-fashioned guy. I like continuous variables rather than discrete variables, right? So uh, why don't you try with, uh, with continuous variables? Then uh, the sectoral analysis and, and the analysis by size of firm, I think this is very, very needed. You, you have to do it, but... If you do this analysis, it's because you think that technology at the central level or technology at the different group of firms is different. And if technology is different, then the definition of what a digitalized firm is in each one of those sectors and in each one of those groups should be also different. But instead, you keep using 
the definition of digitalization at the aggregate level. I think this is inconsistent. If you go to the sectoral analysis, you have to measure digitalization in that sector, comparing firms only to the firms in those sectors. I also like very much the distinction between goods and services, ICT goods and services, how the, the, whether you buy ICT goods or whether you buy ICT services affect employment. Here the concern is that you're looking at a period which is too long, 2003 to 2019. And I have the feeling that what you classify as ICT goods and services in these long periods may not be the same at the beginning of the period that at the end of the period. And related to this, there is also the issue that I forgot to mention, which is the attrition bias. By keeping only those firms that you are served during the whole period, you are not taking into account what technology did to these firms who did not survive, of firms who entered in the middle of the period. Okay, so there is, there is an issue about, about attrition bias and about sample selection on, on, on the empirical exercise that you do. Uh, and finally, uh, about the effects on workforce composition, looking at age groups and looking at education is a good idea. But I think it should be a better idea to look at occupations. Why? Well, these days the almost universal approach to the effect of technology on employment is the so-called task-based framework and the mapping between tasks and occupations. So I think it will be more, more informative rather than looking at these three broad educational groups that you look, looking at uh, different occupations and how uh, technology changes the uh, composition, the occupational composition of the, of the firm labor force. Then, effects on productivity and wages. Why is this important? Well, for productivity, you have the best data set I have seen to measure productivity at the firm level and the determinants of the productivity at the firm level. It's so good that we have been trying to get something similar for Spain during the last five years without success. <laughs> so, uh, and in fact, if the, if the main result of the paper, what you want to convey is this idea of skill bias technological progress, it will be more effective if you can confirm those, those results, also seeing that productivity increases more in firms with uh, you call digitalized and that wages increases more in firms that you call digitalized. Okay. There is also a, a recent survey by Philippe Aguillon and co-authors I think Antoine, you were not one of those, <laughs> in which he claims that the, the, the increase in employment in firms that adopt new technologies is because they gain market share compared to firms that do not adopt technologies, new technologies. So this, this is also something, firm profitability and market share is something that uh, you could look at and it would be very nice to, to document. Uh, probably not in this paper, because this paper is about skill bias technological progress, but as I said, your data set has many, many possibilities, and how those employment effects arise is uh, probably for a second paper. Uh, and finally, causal effects. Um, I am not a member of the causality police. I am not one of those who thinks that a paper who that has trust from identifying causality is not a paper. I think that there is much value in descriptive analysis. But uh, two things, two caveats. One is that uh, many of us doing descriptive analysis 
start the paper in the introduction saying, this is not a paper about causal effects. And then in the conclusion, we say, well, we use words like influences, effects. Okay, so we, when we see a correlation that confirms our priors, we suggest that what we are finding is causal effects. And this is a scene that is also in this paper. Okay, you have two examples there. And the second caveat is that the data set is very good, the descriptive analysis is very, is very good, but if you want to publish this paper in a good journal, you have to try to identify causal effects. And there are several possibilities that you have here. One is, uh, given that you have a so long period, you can try to see what happened to firms moving from what you call non-digitalized firms to digitalized firms. So say firms that changes in the middle of the sample from one group to another. Um, that's one possibility. The second possibility is a more sophisticated econometric approach. There is a paper published in Economic Journal which is very much close to, to your paper which is this paper about robots and firms in Spain, the data set is, is not very good. Uh, robots is measured only as a qualitative response to, in a survey, so it's not the kind of data that you want to have. But what they do in this paper is, uh, is propensity score matching, and, and with that, they were able to publish it in Economic Journal. A third possibility is to use one approach that is very popular these days, which is the so-called Bartik instrument, some kind of share analysis, looking within sectors, how firms are uh, related to the average of the firm in that sector, and trying to use differences from, the, from this share analysis as an instrument for identifying causal effects. And then, well, you can go to the new technologies of digitalization and ask for help, and that's not a very good idea because the answer that you get from ChatGPT are these things that we know that doesn't work. Copilot is a bit more sophisticated, but still, I think that probably in your data set you, you can do something with prices and differences in prices of uh, ICT goods and services that might be used as instrument, like probably this geographical proximity to hubs or something like that, that, that could be a, a good try. But um, anyway, so thank you very much. I think the paper is very good and you should all read it.